Hi there, Sean from Motor Legends here. Today we're going to be running through some motorcycling hints and tips that will hopefully get you the best out of the gear that you have currently or potentially help you when you're buying your next set of gear. Gloves, more important in winter than practically any other time of year because not only are they protecting you from the road, they're actually protecting your hands from the, the wind chill and the, the rain and everything else that's going on. So keeping your hands warm is massively important for safety because you need to be in complete control of the clutch and brakes at all times. So the best way to do that, I find, is before I leave the house, I make sure my gloves are actually warm. And I'm not talking about, you know, not, not a, a cold ambient. I mean, I want them on the radiator, sitting on top of a towel for at least 15 to 20 minutes before I leave. Because the warmer my gloves are when I leave, the longer period of time I have before my hands start to get numb or cold when I'm riding on the road. So a cold glove to start with, first thing it's going to do is take heat away from your hand to warm the glove up. A warm glove will be feeding heat into your hand. So when you've got heated grips, cold hand, cold glove, heated grip, it's got to feed the heat through the cold glove, heat the glove up to keep your hand warm. If you start off with a warm glove, the heat transfer will be much quicker and it will keep your hand warmer for longer. If you don't have heated grips, it's still going to keep you a lot uh, warmer for a lot longer because it's not going to be taking heat from your hand to begin with. The other thing that's absolutely imperative is that your gloves are completely dry because if your hands are warm, your gloves are warm but they're damp, water is 23 times more conductive than air. So all that will happen is the, the water will be trying to evaporate, stealing the heat from your hand, all the, uh, all the heat, excess heat you've got is just going to be escaping into the atmosphere along with that water vapour. So make sure your gloves are bone dry and warm before you leave the house on a cold day. We've all heard the term using the right tool for the job and the same goes for when you're buying your helmet. Get one that does the job that you're asking of it. Obviously they're all there designed to be uh, keeping you safe but I'm sitting on a mug guard right now. It doesn't make a very good chair but you know it might look cool. I don't know if it does or not. You can decide that bit. A bit like a peak. It might look cool but doesn't necessarily serve as a, uh, a functioning bit of equipment for most people's use on a motorcycle. If you're riding, flying down a motorway, all this is gonna do, catch the air and make the helmet appear heavier and it will catch more wind. So just consider what your riding style is. Are you on a naked bike, you want a sports bike and buy a helmet that matches the purpose. So for example, the aperture on this will be pointing straight forwards. If you're riding this on a sports bike, you're leant over, you're going to be looking at a higher point on the helmet, therefore you're going to be losing some of that visibility. So just consider what bike you have, what helmet you're getting, and buy appropriately, and you will have a much better experience riding with a helmet that suits your bike uh, in terms of the riding you're doing, rather than just buying something because it looks, looks the part. So if you are going to buy goggles, bring your helmet. It doesn't work. Coming in, just trying goggles on. They'll all feel comfortable. You might get the odd one that fits over glasses nicely, one that doesn't. If you're not glasses wearer, you won't know any different. Um, but what you'll find that if there is not a sufficient gap above your eyebrows when you put the helmet on, like this, the goggles will end up pushing on your nose and you'll make a purchase that you will not find out until later that you regret. So, uh, not, not very good. <laughs> also, this helmet doesn't fit me very well, but you get the idea. If you're gonna go and buy goggles, take the helmet with you that you own. Same vein, when you buy glasses, take your helmet with you. I know it looks a bit strange, but you'll find that it will save you money once you get your new glasses and then you try your helmet on you might find that the curvature of the glasses doesn't quite fit 
back in behind your ears. So it's always a good idea, take your glasses with you when you're buying your, sorry, <laughs> take your helmet with you when you're buying your glasses as well. The GTX cuff is a fantastic feature for any wet weather gear for the motorcycle. It essentially stops rain from running up the sleeve because you've got the age old question, do you put your glove inside the sleeve of your jacket or outside? Because one way the rain runs up the sleeve of the jacket, the other way the, run, uh, the water runs down your sleeve of the jacket inside the glove. So this is a fantastic solution. However, it's slightly more faff. So when you're dressed in the morning or whenever you get on the bike, it's just an extra zip to do up. Um, what I would suggest is leaving your jacket with the cuffs rolled up. This will help it dry out quicker. And also it makes it easier for when you put it on to put your gloves on without trying to fold the cuff back with a gloved hand. So this way the glove goes straight on and it's a lot easier to pull this part of the cuff forward than to roll it back. So that's a little quick tip for those of you with rucker gear or any other, other gear that's got a double cuff on it. My dear old mum always used to say to me before leaving the house, make sure you've got clean underwear on. And for the most part, I've always abided by that. But there was a certain point I realised it's not just clean underwear that you need especially on a motorcycle in cold, wet conditions or in extreme temperatures. You will need some synthetic or breathable underwear. And she should have gone into more detail, but so it's, it's taken me quite some time to realize this, but synthetic socks or breathable socks are things like merino wool mixes, are fantastic at keeping your feet warm and dry and cool in the hot weather as well and dry. <laughs> so what you want to avoid is cotton, that's going to hold on to moisture, which in the cold weather is going to keep you colder and in the hot weather is going to keep you hotter. Merino wool mix sock will keep you much more comfortable for longer in the winter and the same again in the summer. Despite people thinking that merino wool is just there to keep you warm, it will actually help your boot stay drier on the inside because it will release more of the moisture, pass it through the membrane and then it will keep your feet warmer and drier or cooler depending on the temperature. Same with boxer shorts or Y fronts, whatever it is you choose. Synthetic, they don't have to be fancy, but just not cotton. Wearing something synthetic against the skin, it's gonna get moisture away from places you don't want it. Keep bad smells away, which is another benefit. And if you're touring for a long day, it will be more comfortable in the saddle for longer if you wear a synthetic liner against the skin and you'll, you'll notice specifically, especially in the heat, big differences uh, in, in your comfort during riding. If you're in riding 30 degree heat, you'll be far more comfortable with better, better layers against the skin. So don't forget, get decent pants and socks that are breathable. So no single piece of kit will cover you for more than 80% of your riding conditions. The more varying conditions that you ride in, the, uh, the more different pieces of kit you'll need to remain comfortable. So just because you get a jacket that costs £1,200, well, that's the one you're looking at, doesn't necessarily mean it will possess the correct technical properties to get you through all of your riding conditions. So if, for example, you're riding on the hottest day, something like this, probably not a great idea. But if you invest in that 80% and then you look at the peripherals, you can probably get away with the odd hot day, the odd extreme wet day, depending on what gear you've got and what you end up riding in. So always aim to cover 80% of your riding with any single bit of kit you buy, and then uh, for the majority of your riding, and then for the bits that are on the outskirts, the odd day when it's 30 degrees, you can invest slightly less maybe and get a, a vented jacket, or if you hardly ever go out in the rain, d don't get something like this just get a Scott waterproof to throw over the top. So just when you're purchasing, if you're getting a big, you're doing a big purchase, aim for the 80% and don't worry too much about the peripherals because nothing will ever cover everything. Vents on a hot day can be a motorcyclist's best friend, but 
Positioning is key. If you're on a naked bike, not so much of a concern. If you're on a fared bike with a large fairing, you need to consider that if your jacket only has vents on the chest, as great as that would be on a naked bike, a fared bike, the air just won't be getting in there until you stand up. So if you do have a really fared bike, consider getting a laminated jacket with more venting up the arms and the sides, maybe on the shoulders, the, the sort of outer frame of your body rather than centrally because there'll be much less airflow there. So we've all been there. Beautiful summer's day, bike's clean, helmet's clean, not a cloud in the sky, you think, great. I don't need to bring anything with me today, not gonna to bring my waterproofs, nothing. Jump on the bike, go for a blast. Hour in, you suddenly realise you can barely see a thing because you've hit about eight million insects going through all those twisty bends through the woods. So what do you do? You haven't got your, your fancy kit with you, but you've pulled into a cafe. There's no toilet. You're going, how do I clean this? Bit of paper, ideally something that's absorbent. Most places will have napkins. Pour just some plain water on it, let it soak in. Lay it over the visor to the offending insects. Give it 10 minutes or so to soak up. So better to do this when you arrive, if you remember. 10 minutes later, you'll just be able to wipe that clean, give it a quick dry, and I know this is not ideal because wood fibers can scratch visors, but it's a hell of a lot better than riding with a load of insects on your visor. So that's my little tip. If you're out and you need a little makeshift plan to get your visor clean because you've got your stuff at home, use a bit of water and a bit of tissue. Any biker that's ridden in some real miserable cold conditions will be familiar with neck collars and the benefits they bring in terms of insulating you from the cold. All of those little gaps where air can get in, it's pretty miserable if you're leaving them exposed because you've, you've not usually got anything covering up your neck between your jacket and your helmet. So you'll get something like one of these neck tubes, you'll put it on, tuck it up inside the helmet, stop all the air from moving around, it'll keep you nice and warm. So you probably wouldn't consider this as a tool to keep you cool, but a simple little trick Dunking one of these into some cold water on a really hot summer's day is like a little mini air conditioning unit. The evaporative cooling effect from that being close to all those really hot blood vessels around your neck will be taking heat away from your blood which is circulating all around your body. So it will make a significant difference and keep you much cooler. It's like sweat 2.0 except it's not as smelly. So using one of those with some cold water and just top it up every time it gets dry Pull into a little cafe, good excuse to stop. Pull into a cafe, soak it in some cold water, put it on again, and you'll find an amazing difference to your hot weather riding. Keep your gear indoors. Now, the reason I say this is it will help you get better longevity out of your motorcycle gear. What I mean by that, it's a little bit nerdy, like most of the things I say. A helmet made up of different components each of which will react to heat slightly differently. So if your gear is kept outdoors and in summer, your gear is heating up, then it's getting uh, in the middle of the day, then it's getting colder at night, everything's expanding, contracting, that causes stresses on elements that are bonded together. So the EPS, for example, uh, glued in against the shell, cheek pads, things like that. Keeping your gear indoors will keep them uh, in much better condition over the long term, and it will also keep you safer. So that goes for everything. It will also be a nice, much more comfortable experience going out and putting on a cold jacket. Never a great thing on a, on a cold winter's morning. So keep your gear indoors and hopefully whoever you're living with is happy to agree with that. This one won't apply to new riders. It's for those of you out there that have already got a load of kit. and Maybe you're just buying some new gloves or some new boots. But when you come into the shop, even if you're in the car, bring your old gear with you. And that can be helmets, gloves, could be everything if you want to. But for example, if I'm coming to buy a new pair of gloves, I'll bring my jacket because I want to make sure that the gloves work with the jacket. Either they fit inside comfortably or outside, whichever way you like to wear your gloves. If I'm buying a new jacket and I've got a pair of gloves that I absolutely love and I'm not willing to give up, I would do the same. I'd 
I'd bring my gloves and make sure they work with the new jacket that I'm looking at. Same with boots, you buy new boots, bring your trousers so you can make sure that the width of the trouser is going to go over the top of the boot you're looking at. So say you've, you've just swapped from a sports bike to an adventure bike and you want to get a big adventure boot, something slightly more off-road orientated. They, they fit uh, much wider at the top with the extra shin armour and the buckles and everything. So you might just want to make sure that that trouser that you've got currently goes over the top, clears the buckles and is still comfortable to wear. So top tip there is just bring your old gear with you, even if it's a little bit of a faff. It will just help you make better decisions because it will also remind you of things that you don't like about your current gear and that you make sure that you can avoid that in the new gear that you're buying. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that's going to be of some help to you. If there's things you think I've missed, please write in the comments below and we'll be able to respond to those. And hopefully people reading those comments might see the extra tips and it might help them out in the long term. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Sean from Motor Legends and hopefully we'll see you again in the shop soon.